I've been thinking a lot of the best way to start survival skills from Alaska, and I think I may have just found it. Today, we're going to be looking... So in this series, we're going to be going over many different survival, practical survival skills, and things that you can use to better prepare yourself. And this is going to be based on my experience with survival, bushcrafting, hunting, and hiking all in Alaska. So on this part of survival skills from Alaska, we're going to be talking about survival kit selection or survival gear selection that you can use to help better yourself should you find yourself in a survival situation. Let's get into it. So just like many of my journeys that end up becoming videos, they come out of a level of frustration or a level of lacking in the community. And this is no different. Now, when I talk about gear selection, and ultimately when I talk about survival as a whole, I want to make this very clear, this part, that the entire purpose, the reason why we practice, the reason why we have the gear we have, and the reason why we build the plans that we do, is ultimately for our rescue. And so, before we get into uh, the three primary elements of what your kid should have, the most key point that everything is hinged upon is rescue. If you don't get rescued, if you can't signal for help, there is no reason for anything else. You can have the best shelter, the best fire, the best water supply. Everything can be going dandy, but if you don't get rescued, you might as well be dead on arrival. So I want to make it very clear that the most important part of any survival kit, the most important part of any survival kit, regardless to what else is in it, is the ability to signal for rescue or to get rescued. And so, before we jump into some of these survival kits and talk about some options, the most important thing that you should include in your survival kits are the ability to make signal fires and the ability to signal for help through signal mirrors and through whistles. These are some of the most basic, core, fundamental things that are not fine motor skills, they're very gross motor skills. It doesn't take much to use a whistle, it doesn't take much to start a fire, it doesn't take much to use a signal mirror, and so we should be aiming after these things. Ultimately, the best thing would be a personal locator beacon, too. That would be a great option to include into a survival kit, but ultimately at the core of everything, you want to be able to signal and get rescued. If you can't get rescued, then like I said, everything else you're doing is ultimately a mute point and you might as well die, because Truly, rescue and getting out of there is the entire point of survival. And it, the successful survivalists are those who get rescued, not the ones who die in the woods from loneliness. That being said, when we think about rescue, we have to focus on the first 72 hours because at least here in Alaska, the Alaska State Troopers will search for about 72 hours and specialized search and rescue teams will search anywhere from three days, 72 hours, to 10 days. And so that is your window of opportunity to get rescued. You have about three to four days from the time that search and rescue is activated to the time that they will start to give up their search. So those first 72 hours are the most important time for you to get rescued and for you to signal for rescue. So using the devices we just mentioned and other signaling devices, if you have them, that should be pretty well getting you on your way to getting rescued. Now, what do you do in the meantime? Obviously, rescue is almost never instantaneous. It almost always takes at least a few hours. And depending on your type of situation, on a day like today, rescue may not be, or some of these three components may not be as important because you can probably weather this weather okay and get out. But there are three things you should consider should you have to wait a little bit longer or should your conditions be a little bit more inclement. So the first one is going to be fire. Fire is one of the most important things because it provides a level of heat. It provides a level of being able to purify water, being able to cook food if necessary. It also can help battle back bugs if they're particularly bad where you are. And at the core of it, fire has a level or component of comfort that just cannot be matched any other way. There's nothing that really warms the soul than a good fire. 
So being able to start a fire is very important. And in addition to this, <clears throat> having the necessary abilities and means to start a fire can also help you with signal fires, which signal fires are probably one of the biggest ways to get someone's attention if they are looking for you because nothing gets the attention of people faster than seeing a plume of smoke rising out of the forest. So being able to start a fire is very important. And like in this particular kit here, this is my personal survival kit and this is what I carry on me when I'm out in the woods, as you can tell. And what I use for this one is I try to keep it very basic and very easy, but I use three different methods, or I have three different methods, should I need them. So, and as always, I would recommend when we're talking about fire that you carry multiple different methods. As the old adage goes, two is one, one is none. And so I try to carry three different fire starting methods and and all of them basically go in a level of severity. If I really don't need a fire, but I kind of want a fire, I have a good old ferro rod. It's pretty easy to use. So the ferro rod's a pretty easy to use system, uh, but it also is a best case scenario. The ferro rod does require a lot more prep time than some of the other items we're gonna mention. It also is a best case scenario, being that you know I have two hands to strike it, I have processed my tinder correctly to light on fire. Ferro rods are great and they're pretty foolproof, but they are not the thing that I would solely trust my life on. So next to that, I have just a really basic bunch of survival matches. And of course this is in, and of course this is in a waterproof container Obviously, we don't want matches to get wet, and I have some steel wool in here to help kind of buffer them, but ultimately, I have uh, waterproof matches in a waterproof container with their striker, and I want to make that very clear because I've taken a look at some people's survival kits, and they have matches, but there's no striker, and even strike anywhere matches are not as versatile or as strike anywhere as they make their claim to be. It still requires an abrasive surface, so ultimately just going ahead and making sure you have one of those strike boards with your matches is very important. Now once again, matches are pretty great, they're pretty self-explanatory, and they get the job done pretty well. However, that requires proper setup, and it also requires two hands for you to hold the match and the striker and strike. So the last one I have is a is a little peanut lighter. Now this, once again, is also in a waterproof container. It is O-ring sealed, and it works pretty well. However, what I like is, so this one's completely one-handed. I can unscrew the cap with one hand. I can, I can unscrew the cap with one hand. I can strike the, mat, the lighter with one hand, and I can start fires one-handed if that should come down to it. In addition to this, it's pretty gross motor skills. There isn't anything fine-toothed about this, and it's a pretty easy setup to field. Okay, so those are the basics to fire starting. And once again, I try to keep up multiple different options for multiple different situations and levels of motor skill. Once again, the ferro rod is pretty good if I have a fine level of motor skill and I have the ability of both hands to properly prepare tinder and strike it. However, I like the lighter because if things do happen, if I do lose the ability to use one arm or if I need something that is going to have an instant flame, the lighter is right there. So that is fire. Now the next thing we want to focus on is shelter because in some cases fire is great but it's not enough to protect yourself from the weather. Once again, if it's sheer downpour, you're going to want something a little bit more. And one of the biggest things that I try to emphasize for people is clothing is the first level of shelter. It's the best level of shelter you have as well because it's what's on you. It doesn't require any additional calories to go out or additional time or calories to go out and construct. It's right there on you or hopefully by you. So this is, this is one of those points that you want to make sure that you either have the appropriate clothing for inclement weather, you want to make sure that you have proper clothing either on you already or in your backpack or somewhere close by to where you can get it. Because like I said, clothing is going to be your first, easiest, and best protection. Now in addition to this, it's very easy to pack in a container like this something like a mylar blanket. I have a couple mylar blankets in here of different sizes and thicknesses and you don't necessarily have to get fancy and build a shelter with them, 
but you can wrap them around you and they will give you some degree of instant protection, especially from uh, water and wind. So those are the two biggest you know, things that you fight. So the last thing is water. So water is pretty important and similarly to clothing, water can also be something that you easily pack with you. But something like this little Grail Geopress this is something you can fill at your house, carry with you on a little carabiner, and the cool thing about the Geopress, though this is no sales pitch for it, is you do have the ability to filter water with you. And you do have the ability to filter water with you right here. So it's something that you can pretty easily pre-game, but if you don't want to go with something like that, you can also carry pretty minimalistic setups, such as you've seen with the life straw being underneath my uh, PSK, a few condoms or a few plastic bags in here to collect water and drink that water through something like a life straw. There's many different options for water purification. In addition, you can also use iodine tablets. Redundancy is always key. I always keep iodine tablets in here with plastic water, with plastic bags for water in addition to whether I'm carrying the life straw on it or if I'm carrying something like this Grail Geoprax. So it's pretty easy to keep a good setup for water and especially nowadays with how easy water filters and how small they are or how built in they are to other systems, it's pretty easy to carry some systems that are pretty basic and will give you adequate water once again for 72 hours. So keep that in mind and those are the three biggest core components. Shelter, sorry, fire, shelter, and water. Those are the biggest components you want to focus on and there's very easy ways to have those. You don't necessarily have to focus on something like the five C's of survivability because a lot of that is unnecessary and over the top. You don't necessarily need cordage for 72 hours, though it would be helpful. And things like combustion, things like combustion are things you want to focus on, cutlery and cover. 